Would it surprise you to know that behind the scenes of the video game corporate machine, there are powers at play who wish to manipulate you, the consumer, into buying a product that you'd had no prior interest in by threatening people to give their game a positive review so that it can climb the charts and end up on the other end of your screen. Oh wait, you watch Tugs, so you're woke as fuck and nothing surprises you anymore. Well, here's another standard news video, I guess. Peggy 18. Now they know it's real. Yeah, you see, yeah, the wall's real, you see? Yeah. Huh. In the world of video game marketing, companies can and will go to amazing lengths in order to get their creations in front of as many people as possible. Whether it's by providing exclusive trailers, screenshots, or access to big companies like IGN, or by providing copies or PC keys to any number of hungry content creators who would sell their fucking souls for a free game. And both of these tactics, among the many others out there, work really well. It allows people who are curious about a game or might not have ever known about its existence the opportunity to check it out before potentially purchasing it. Now, neither of those things are illegal either. Uh, okay, well, uh, the, the young rosy-cheeked YouTube gamer could potentially get popped by the FTC if they don't <laughs> add the proper clarifications to their videos, but that's not the game company's fault, guys. They almost certainly informed them that free games are technically ads and that they should cover their ass. Right? But there's also much more sinister things at play beneath the already greasy surface of the gaming industry. Things you wouldn't... All right, things that you would totally believe, actually. Take this latest case in games industry fuckery, for example. One game studio out there had a CEO who one day was struck with brilliance. Patrick Steppel, CEO of... And yes, this is their real studio name, although it's spelled differently. <laughs> Incel Games. <laughs> Incel Games. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great... It's, uh, uh, <laughs> the CEO of Incel Games <laughs> stumbled upon an idea so simple, he probably wondered why no one had ever thought of it before. Why don't I just threaten to fire all of my employees if they don't log on to Steam, purchase the game that our studio has created, and leave a positive review for it? It's genius. I know. All of you, the bet you come up with the best ideas when you are involuntarily not having sex. Yeah, it's true. Really, really spurns the creative juices. Yeah. You gotta, the juices have to go somewhere. They go straight to the creativity glands. Mm hmm Yeah. No fat. Yeah. What the, my glasses. You're wearing them. They're, right they're on your hat. <coughs> Sorry, everyone. Now you're at peak performance. <laughs> it's much harder to read like this. These things are filthy. The game in question, Wild Buster, is described in a string of interchangeable buzzwords as a fast paced intergalactic hack and slash MMO RPG requiring strategic team composition, smart use of special abilities, quick reflexes, and above all, an appreciation for over the top weaponry. And again, this game, it was developed by Incel Games. I guess that term is kind of lost in translation because this studio is in Malta. So whatever. Inceldom is an international cause. Anyways, here's the, lov the lovely email that their CEO sent out after the game had its release on Steam. I had sent an email earlier, but I was told that some of you announced to colleagues that you do not want to make a purchase of the game and or a review. Frankly, this leaves me pretty disappointed. Of course, I cannot force you to write a review, let alone tell you what to write. Wink, wink. But I should not have to. Neglecting the importance of reviews will ultimately cost jobs. If WB fails, Incel fails, IME fails, and then we will all have no job next year. Reddit already banned our subreddit for no reason. We were just trying to promote our games. We get a lot of weird tweets from people. <laughs> <laughs> so I am asking you either to do the following buy the game and present me the receipt until Friday night, for which, together with a claim form, you will be reimbursed within 24 hours, or explain to me tomorrow why you do not wish to do this. I would like to discuss this individually and privately with each of you, and we'll follow up. Ironically enough, in the hours following that email, positive reviews for the game started appearing on its store page. Convenient timing, for sure. All right, now, yeah, it's pretty obvious that it was just the the company's employees jerking off all over the game out of fear of losing their jobs, but it seems like at least one or two brave souls 
tip someone off at Valve uh, to the fact that their CEO, who we can only assume has no chin, Tipped him off to the fact that that CEO is threatening people into leaving good reviews, which is clearly against the rules, not only for the platform, but is also in clear violation of the Tugs Convention for Ethical Standards in Gaming. But this isn't fair. All the other Chad game developers, they do this all the time. Yeah. And then one of these beta incel developers tries it. All I did was send a really nice email. Gamers just want to be treated like shit. Yeah. And when a good game developer comes out with yeah. a nice, nice game, they want they, nothing to do with it. They want nothing to do with it. They, they and then go, they're always complaining why there's no nice games around. They go run back to EA's Chad Cock. <laughs> there you go. The metaphor is getting muddy. <laughs> anyway, not only did Valve pull Wild Buster from the Steam Marketplace, uh, it pulled every title from Incel Games back. Banned again. As well. uh, they explained this in a post on their Steam forum saying, uh, the publisher appears to have used multiple Steam accounts to post positive reviews for their own games. This is a clear violation of our review policy and something we take very seriously. For these reasons, we are ending our business relationship with Incel Games Limited <laughs> and removing their games from our store. If you have previously purchased this game, it will remain accessible in your Steam library. Uh, manga enthusiast outlet Kotaku reached out to the CEO of Incel Games for a comment. And yeah, he pretty much admitted what he did and said he's going to fight back for some reason. Here's the response. At the day of EA launch in December, an email was sent to everyone in the company telling staff, about 20 people, including freelancers, how important reviews are in the Steam ecosystem and that a failure of Wild Buster would mean the company was in jeopardy. It was meant to rally people's support, including advertising the game to their family and friends in the hope to simply get more reviews. Mr. Incel continued, it was never intended to threaten anyone, but just state the importance of reviews for the whole company. No staff has received penalties for not buying the game or writing a review. There also never were texts or instructions provided for reviews. We sincerely apologize for the misleading wording in the email and the practice in general. We, the complete team behind Incel Games, will keep working on improving Guardians of Ember and Wild Buster while still providing access to our game through other channels. We hope to regain the trust of players through our future actions and are further in discussion with Steam about this incident. Until then, current Steam owners or those in possession of a Steam key can continue to play normally. You can still probably get the game on Gamersgate, which is still an unfortunate name for a service to buy games on. Is that real? Yeah. Gamersgate? Yeah, it was, it's, it was around before the whole thing, and Ugh. by God, they stuck with it. It's not my fault. <laughs> no, it's the children who are wrong. Uh, well, we wish you the worst of luck. May the gaming gods not have mercy on your soul, nor shall they ever grant you that precious few millimeters of bone necessary to complete your company's transition to becoming Glorious Chad Gaming, uh, GCG for short, which is, I'm sure, the next step in their plan. But let's move on to a game I am truly confused by and admittedly completely uninformed about because at this point, if a company comes out with a battle royale mode for their game, I'm going to try it which led me to finally give Paladins a shot last week. And I have no earthly fucking idea what the hell is going on, and apparently neither do they, because their Battlegrounds mode is already offline. And it's, it's now gonna be going through some massive changes. They pulled that shit so fucking fast, it was around for like three days. Wow. They were like, nah, gotta get rid of it. Uh, first of all, and, and again, I could be completely wrong about this, but it seems like you have to immediately start pumping money into this game, not just to have a competitive edge on your potential opponents, but also just to actually play the characters that you are assigned to randomly. Characters which often include what appear to be shitty knockoffs of actual characters from movies and TV, like Rocket Raccoon and Groot here, for example. According to our extensive 10 minute research into this game's alleged pay to win system, there was something implemented long before this battle royale mode called Cards Unbound, which allowed you to purchase upgrades to your in-game power cards that would quite literally give you an advantage over other players. Yeah. Also, this all went down just after Battlefront 2's whole controversy, so it's almost like the devs were like, wow, look at how EA is shaking money out of their users' pockets. We would be stupid not to do the exact same thing. What's the worst that could happen? So when some friends and I got morbidly curious about the Battle Royale mode that they released, I, I logged in, I spent about 10 minutes opening up various loot boxes that I had apparently earned through Twitch Prime over the past few months, 
Then, after my serotonin was depleted from that, I entered the game, where I found that it only gave you a few options on which characters you could choose for that round, and sometimes half of mine were grayed out because I hadn't purchased them yet. Oh. Now, once in the actual game, you can find these cards lying around because they literally put them on your mini-map, and those cards act as kind of like stat boosters for your character. But you can also just fucking buy those cards and upgrades for them. I hated the game. It was very, un it was battle, if I could explain it the best way, it was like if you did, because this is kind of, people have said it's a knockoff of Overwatch, it's kind of like Overwatch Battle Royale in the sense that you have like tanks, healers, assassins, blah, blah, blah. It's a, it's a nice concept, but those are all team-based classes though. Yeah, it's strange. You also don't get to pick where you land. It just puts you in a little blimp and lands you wherever it wants. It's strange. Take the choice away. Well, apparently a lot of other people, which includes people from within the company, they hated that mode. And they hated the card system too, because as of this past Sunday, High res Studios took the Battlegrounds mode offline and issued a complete reversal of their Cards Unbound system. In a statement, the game's new executive producer said this, We know this system has angered many of our most loyal fans and become a point of continuous contention in the Paladins community and even inside of High res your voice has been heard loud and clear. Our team will be working over the next major release cycle to remove Cards Unbound from the game. We'll be replacing it with a new system that I believe the community will be really excited about, including the reintroduction of the deck building point system and a method for obtaining cards that will be way less grindy. He went, then went on to list out other changes that will be made to the card system, then addressed their Battlegrounds mode saying, quote, after seeing the results of our recent external testing and some exciting internal tests of additional changes to the mode, we've decided to make a few big changes in regards to Battlegrounds. We are going to remove the alpha version of Battlegrounds from the core Paladins game effective tomorrow. This was obviously posted a couple days ago. Over the next few weeks, we are going to make a number of aggressive changes to the mode that, based on internal testing, we think will make it considerably more engaging and fun. Our code name for these changes inside the studio has been YOLO. If that gives you any indication of what lies ahead. Oh, it does. It does. Hopefully, you will enjoy them as much as we have in initial testing. When we re-release that mode, uh, it will be under a separate game client under a different name. The mode will have the current map and some of the elements from Paladins, as well as some significant changes. But it will be relaunched as a new game. We expect it to be free to play with monetization around skins and visuals. So there you go. So Fortnite. So, uh, <laughs> But immediately, they were like, Oh wow, people tried this game that hadn't played Paladins before and they fucking they hate it. They did not like it. He continues, We hope to start public testing of an early alpha mode of this new game as soon as we can, within weeks. Why make this change? In short, we think that the things that are necessary to make Paladins Battlegrounds great and amazing are in conflict with the things that make the OG version of Paladins that we all know and love great. Right now, we are in a spot where these changes we need to make to each mode are in conflict with what the other mode needs. We think that giving separate teams focus on separate games will produce a greater result. We also don't want users to be confused about what Paladins is and should be. Paladins should be the best damn hero shooter ever made. And we want the Paladins team focused on that goal. We'll aim to do the same with the Battle Royale game and the team working on that. So. At the very least, the company is listening to its core audience. It just took them a few months of egregious pay-to-win mechanics to result in an outcry so loud that they simply couldn't ignore it anymore. Do I get to keep the things I bought? No. No, you probably do. It's all like Nerf guns and shit. Still, uh, whatever. It's a start. So, it's more than nothing. <clears throat> but speaking of listening to our core audience, the man of the hour, your favorite gamer of all time, the man who lives, breathes, and sweats epics. Shibby. Yeah, he's his musk is wild. That man is Shibby and he is here to review another highly anticipated title. Shibby, get in here. Tugs boys and Tugs girls, this week I have the pleasure of reviewing a historic gaming franchise that has released its newest, juiciest piece of ass last week. A franchise, no not Star Wars Battlefront 2, that really needed some good faith in the gaming community. Unfortunately, well, I guess, t for Tugs, it's fortunate. They managed to fuck up. Again. Did no one pay attention to how pissed off everyone got over pay-to-win loot boxes? Apparently, this company did not get that memo. Of course, I'm talking about a game 
that Hideo Kojima had no part of because the company forced his ass out. Metal Gear survived. No, not one of those battle royale games that every AAA developer will be making this year, but a stinky, sweaty, sloppy piece of Konami crap that you, yes you viewer, will be paying $40 for. Basically, at the cost of a season pass for a game because they know it's not worth $60, but had to pillage your wallet for all they could get. The average plebeian Madden Call of Duty gamer will see the Metal Gear title paired with the survived tagline and be frothing at the loins. <sighs> Don't be fooled, fellow shibby fans. It's all a scam. I heard you like save files. Do you want to do anything other than a single character playthrough? Well, yeah, Shibby, I like to RP as different survivors and try different tactics. And oh, it, my, my little brother, he was interested and I don't want him messing up my primary save file. Well, you know what? Konami says fuck you to both you and your little brother. Pay up, $10. That's right, not only did they gut ugh, Hideo Kojima of his franchise, they're now charging you, yes, you, James, a $10 fee for an additional save file. No, not some cool real life flash drive or something like that. $10 for you to store some additional lines of code. Fuck Konami. I mean, Battlefront 2 might be pay to progress, but this is worse. This is pay to save your fucking game file. What's next? Pay $5 to uninstall the game from my computer or my data corrupts my drive or something like that? Enough, do no I buy. Scummy business practices like this should be criminal and it should not be supported, ever. I really thought 2018 could not be a worse year for gaming, but this is the worst ever. Tugs boys and Tugs girls, this is pushing the boundaries. This survive mode should have been a $15 or less DLC for Metal Gear Phantom Pain, but some of you idiots out there are supporting these products. Dare I say even pre-order it. Makes me sick to my G-fueled, I mean, G-filled stomach. Metal Gear Survive, the type of game that you do the same thing over and over, killing some monsters over and over with little to no variety. I dare say, kind sir, Fortnite save the world. The PVE version of Fortnite is actually better than MG Survive. Building is better in Fortnite, better weapon variety in Fortnite, more variety of materials, enemies, objectives, and traps. No, not the kind with male genitalia. Fortnite Save the World is also a better multiplayer experience for cooperative play. I do not love how the PvE version of Fortnite is in the backseat compared to the Battle Royale version, but you also get an incredible free Battle Royale when you consider Fortnite. Also, they just added hoverboards, so that's pretty cool. What does uh, Metal Gear Survive have here? Uh, some shitty cardboard box. Uh, I mean, Nintendo Labo. I don't know. And Metal Gear Survive base building construction? It's not interesting. Needing to worry about food and water is not a challenging mechanic anymore. Just like Borderlands pre-sequel, needing to maintain your oxygen level is a poorly executed game mechanic, and it's not survival. It's just tedious and slows the player down. The movement is clunky, clunky. Nearly all the assets of this game are just a ripoff from Phantom Pain packaged into a side thought project. This shit should have been DLC. But shibby. The zombie killing must be so L-I-T lit, right? Uh, also, no, you place down a fence and you just poke the zombie with a spear. AI is literally special needs, like me. Overall, Metal Gear Survive is one of the worst standalone titles ever to be released when compared to similar titles of such a historic gaming franchise. Looking at you, latest version of Tony Hawk, do no I buy this trash! Fuck Konami! Cuck Konami! Kojima Productions Forever, zero out of 10. Shibby, you know what, sometimes you're all right. We give you a hard time, but uh, we love having you. So instead of trying to one-up you this week with a title from the same studio or even genre, we're gonna look back at a title that has continued to pop up almost every year since its initial release with new or updated versions of itself. But we should look back at the game from when it first hit shelves. That's why we went all the way back in time to find this review of Skyrim from when it came out almost a decade ago. This review comes from Amazon user CS1983, who titled their review, Evil Satanic Filth. Here's what they had to say about Skyrim for the Xbox 360. This game promotes evil on a massive scale. Necromancy, spellcasting, summoning of demons, alchemy, same-sex marriage, idolatry, pantheism, 
stealing, lying, and murder. In fact, it seems the developers worked to get all mortal sins implemented into the game. Not to forget the promoting of evil, Sumerian slash Babylonian, idols, Ishtar, the literal harlot of Babylon promoted as Azura, together with Ishtar's eight-pointed star, Talos, the dragonborn, who was made the hero of the gods, bears a striking resemblance to Marduk. All gods in this game are based off gods of old mythologies, and all these gods were fallen angels. Satan worship in its purest form. Also, many of the names of orc strongholds and some of the Dwemer, Dwarven, Ruins, and Skyrim sound phonetically like old Babylonian cities in the Kassite language. More Kazgur, orc stronghold in Skyrim, Dur Kurzgalgu, Kassite capital of Babylonia. In a sane world, Skyrim, and almost every other game actually, wouldn't even exist. Signs of the end times, I guess. One star. Oh, he's stopping those end times with that review. Good job. Yeah. I'm doing my part, are you? Well, uh, as an added bonus, there's someone else doing their part. And this one was almost too ridiculous for Tugs, but I, you know what, I threw it in there anyway as a wow. kind of a goof and a gag. Great. This review, it stood out uh, because it was directly beneath that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's from an anonymous user and uh, it is titled, Violent Games Like This Caused 9-11, Columbine, and the Tsunami in Japan. It reads, How's it going, fellas? I love video games. I even consider myself a gaming expert since I've owned all the great systems like the Tiger Gamecom, Virtual Boy, and Sega Dreamcast. But violence in video games has gone way too far. It's games like Skyrim that caused 9-11. The, make the makers of Skyrim should be on trial for being responsible for 9-11, Columbine, and the, J the, Japanese <laughs> the Japan tsunami. <laughs> what is so fascinating about running around and killing people? It has no place in the homes of Americans and should be boycotted. Uh, plus, the graphics in this game are really bad. <laughs> The true crime. I prefer those of the. This can't be real. I know. I prefer those of Virtual Boy and Game.com because they were good for its time. For good games, check out Shaq Fu, E.T., Superman's. Okay, this guy's. It's, it's trolling. Yeah. Anything, anything includes Disney or Barbie. Fuck you. God damn it. Yeah, well, it was a fun review. Anyways, uh, <laughs> thank you for watching this week's episode of Tugs. Be sure to watch our other shows here and then. Uh, wait, uh, wait, hold on. Cut. Wait, stop because don't go to those shows yet because. Uh, this Thursday, if you're watching it before, Thursday. if you're watching this before March 1st, 1st, I don't understand why you would watch a Tugs episode weeks later, but if you're watching this before March 1st, we are finally getting access to a custom server in Fortnite Battle Royale for the PC, if you have it on PC. So Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific, uh, we're going to be streaming on this channel as well as on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash etc underscore show. And we're going to be giving out that custom uh, game mode code so mm -hmm. that you guys can hunt all of us down. We're going to be doing squads with me, Elliot, Shibby, and Ian. And then we're probably going to be doing some solo stuff because stream snipers, you fucking assholes, are going to kill us all. Uh, but it's it, it, this is like the first time that uh, we've done it and that we've uh, seen someone in our direct space do it. So it should be a lot of fun, should be chaotic. Uh, we're probably going to get very angry of uh, people killing us, so yeah. it's going to be fun. What uh, could go wrong? Thursday, March 1st, 4 p.m., uh, right here and on our Twitch channel. We'll give out the information when the stream goes live. Uh, until then, check out our live stream from Monday where we had TV's Joel Rubin on as a guest answering your questions and talking about the latest in uh, just random news. And uh, also last week's episode of Tugs, and we'll see you guys soon. <laughs>